Well, boy, I, I want to find out how difficult a decision this was for you. Even though you're the pride of Parkway West, you went to the University of Georgia and you've been with the Braves for a long time. Great broadcast there. A team that has a legitimate chance to win a world championship. In the end, why did Chip Carey say yes to St. Louis and goodbye to Atlanta? <laughs> well, I wish I could say that was the $10 million question. <laughs> but uh, look, it's St. Louis. It's the Cardinals. Uh, when you were born in St. Louis in West County, when you were, as I've joked a couple of times, conceived after a game at Sportsman's Park, uh, Cardinal baseball is kind of in, in your blood. And it certainly is from a family perspective. Everybody knows my grandfather's uh, history with the franchise. That was the team I first fell in love with and taking nothing away from the Braves or the Cubs and the Mariners, which were also awesome stops and so instrumental in my development as a human being and a broadcaster. There's always been the draw of St. Louis, even when I came to town as a visiting broadcaster. You can't help but be amazed and in awe of the draw of the franchise. 45,000 people on a Thursday afternoon against a second division club yelling and screaming and the generations of people wearing Cardinal red and the, the memories that, that so many people have of Cardinal baseball, not just in recent years, but going all the way back to when Stan Musial and Whitey Karowski and Enos Slaughter all played. That part of, uh, that part of the allure has never, ever left me. And uh, to be able to uh, be considered worthy of joining an organization like the Cardinals is a, a tremendous honor and a thrill, and my family couldn't be more excited. Was there a moment during the recruitment that maybe it was a conversation with DeWitt or Mosellock, or maybe some other Cardinal executive, or maybe a former Cardinal, and I don't know how they did it, but was there a moment that put you over the top, or when you knew the offer was there, there was no hesitation? Uh, you know, in, in a situation like this, you don't really know until the offer is made. And look, uh, you read the, the stories in the newspaper. There were a ton of candidates for this job, and there were a lot of incredibly talented people uh, who applied for the job and that I was the right guy for the DeWitt family and the Cardinals is, again, an incredible honor. Uh, you know, you just sort of pinch yourself when it happens because you don't ever believe it possible. And, and the truth is, Frank, that uh, the Cardinals offered me this job on radio 32 years ago. I was a 26, 27-year-old kid doing Orlando Magic basketball games. And a man named Tom Barton flew in unannounced to Orlando, took me to lunch and said, look, I get right down to business. How would you like to be the uh, one of the voices of the St. Louis Cardinals? And after I'd knocked over my iced tea and gathered my composure, we talked it out. And I, I couldn't take the job for myriad reasons. And when that happens, you know, when you turn down a gold standard job, you don't ever think under any circumstances that that opportunity is going to come your way again. And here we are three decades plus later. Um, you know, here I am uh, back in St. Louis and a chance to, to broadcast games for the team that I, I grew up admiring and loving and certainly my dad and grandfather, too. So uh, it's the stuff fairy tales and dreams are made of. And again, taking nothing away from the Braves and the Atlanta Braves organization was great to me and my family for almost a half a century. But uh, at this stage in my career, it was time for a new challenge, a new opportunity. And, you know, the old saying, you always want to go home in baseball. I get that glorious chance in 2023. That is crazy. So you were 26 or 27. You were offered the Cardinals radio job? Yeah, it was a Cardinals radio and TV job. Bud Sports, I think, at the yeah. time was uh, doing things. And Tom Barton, who never had a bad day in his life, made my day when he made that offer. I think his original plan was to have Joe Buck and I work together and try to recreate the Harry Carey Jack Buck stuff, which would have been crazy. Um, but that's when I couldn't take the job, George Grand was fortunate enough to step in and do a great job behind the microphone for the Cardinals. That was after uh, Ken Wilson, I believe. And George did a super job, and I made my way on into Orlando and then Seattle and then to the Cubs eventually uh, and then back to Atlanta. So it's funny how life works out, and, and we talk all the time about how things come full circle, both personally and professionally. And in this case, for me and my family and my career, uh, I definitely think it's safe to say it has gone 360 degrees and I couldn't be more delighted. Everybody knows about your family. And I think pe younger people who saw your grandfather at the end really didn't get to see the really crisp mm. and high energy and spectacular play-by-play -play voice of Harry Carey. Uh, many of us got to hear your father, Skip. I'm wondering what did you take for them? Because I don't think, at least on the surface, there's a whole lot of similarities in your styles. Elaborate, please. Well, I'm a terrible singer like my grandfather, and I'm not <laughs> afraid to have a cocktail after a Cardinal win. How about that? <laughs> Those are two things right off the top of my hat. 
Uh, but, you know, the, the one thing that I carried from both of them is to tell the truth. Look, we're on TV and people can see for themselves. And Cardinal fans are the most knowledgeable fans in the game. They know what a good play is. They know what's supposed to happen. And if it does, you say so. If it doesn't, you say so. That, that's part of the game. And that's what was, again, very attractive to this job, or to me for this job, is we were taught as kids, if uh, the Cubs are in town and Ron Santo makes a great play, you applaud the great play because we're here to appreciate the game of baseball and how hard the game is to play. That's number one. Number two, from my dad's perspective, same thing, tell the truth, be honest, the pictures don't lie. Uh, and from both of them, don't be afraid to have fun. I think ultimately we are um, there to inform people but also to entertain them because, Frank, as you know, over 162 games, every game's not going to be a 3-2 nail-biter in the ninth inning. If it's 13-1 to in the fourth inning, uh, you, you got to try to keep people entertained and interested in what's going on, and the sponsors certainly want you to do that as well. And uh, that's something I've always felt very strongly about and something Steve Stone taught me in the Cubs booth. You know, we are here to obviously hope the Cubs win uh, every day, but we're also here to sell the game because that's important, and you never know who's listening, who's watching, and something you say might make somebody think differently about the game. You might teach them something different about the game with a different perspective. But more importantly, something you say or a great call that you have or staying upbeat and engaged for nine long innings uh, might make a fan for life. And ultimately, that's our goal each and every night. I know this is not anything new for you because you, you know about the popularity of the Cardinal broadcast. But it is kind of crazy that every year they're like one or two in the country. I mean, I know there's a great deal of interest yeah. in the Braves, but you know this is just the fabric of our town every night watching Cardinal baseball on television. And that's a large responsibility for you. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, it's a civic trust, right? I mean, that, that's really what it comes down to. And again, to be... Um, thought of to be a, a, a solid enough ambassador for the DeWitt family, for Cardinal Nation, for the organization, for the players. You're right. That's a huge responsibility. And it's one I took very seriously in Atlanta. And I think, frankly, Frank, uh, I did a really good job of that, representing not just the Braves brand, but Valley South, uh, the ball players, uh, and ultimately my own brand, too. And that's really important to me. I, I'm easy to get along with. I work hard. I show up every day. I love the game. I love talking about the game. I love engaging with the fans. But to your earlier question, I'm very much my own person. I'm not going to come in there and try to be Dan McLaughlin or Joe Buck or Harry Carey or Joe Garagiola or my dad, for that matter. I'm very much my own person. And uh, look, the genetics and the DNA and stuff, that, that's something I can't avoid. But as you know, this is a personality-driven business, and uh, I think that the people that I left it behind in Atlanta, the great friends and coworkers, know that if there's anything you can say about me is that I'm a genuine person, and what you see is what you get. And hopefully more people than not will like it, and hopefully we'll have a very long and happy marriage together in St. Louis. You mentioned Dan, and I know the two of you are good friends, and all of us here at KFNS yeah. are rooting for a Dan McLaughlin comeback one day soon. Yes. I'm wondering, yes. have you had conversations, and is it uh, what is it like replacing a good friend? Uh, that's the hardest part of this. And yes, Dan and I have spoke. He congratulated me via text. I mean, Dan is first class. And uh, as excited as I am for myself and for my family, uh, I think all of us would agree that the circumstances of this stink. Uh, Dan is a great broadcaster. He's a great father. He's a great husband. He's a tremendous ambassador for the city of St. Louis and was for the Cardinals. I mean, Dan broadcast more games on television than any broadcaster in the history of the franchise. And when you think about that, that's, that's an amazing feat. And I know Dan's going to be okay. And I know that a million people plus are rooting for him. No one's, uh, uh, higher than on that list than I am. And, uh, look, uh, Dan and I, <laughs> He's like a brother to me, and I love that guy with all my heart, and I know he's going to be okay. I know he's going to come back. He's too talented not to, and anything I can do to help him in that regard, I'm behind it 100%. Look, um, you love the sinner, you hate the sin, if you if you want to use that old uh, parable. Uh, I think that's how a lot of people feel about Dan, and I know that uh, he's going to be in a better place, and when that happens, it'll be a glorious return, and I can't wait for it to happen, Frank. All right, so you have two kids, and both of them are now play-by-play -play broadcasters? Tell me about that. Well, I have four kids. I have, a, I have an older daughter who's in Los Angeles, and I have identical twin sons who are 23. They are broadcasters for the Amarillo Sod Poodles, uh, one of my all-time favorite minor league nicknames. That's the AA affiliate of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, my oldest twin is Harry Christopher Carey IV. 
Uh, his identical twin is Stefan, and they are tremendous people. They are great broadcasters. Last year was their first year, uh, 22 years old, straight out of college, and from uh, Athens, Georgia, to St. Augustine, Florida, to Amarillo, Texas, in the span of about two and a half weeks was quite the culture shock for them. But they're broadcasting down in AA, doing a great job. The, the city has really embraced them, and uh, – uh, I think they have a great chance to get to the show someday. They're like everybody else, working their way up the ladder and doing it their way. And uh, as proud as I am of what they do behind the microphone and the way they're representing themselves and their franchise down there, they're even better people. And that's uh, a full credit to my wife, Susan, who, as you know, uh, takes care of the, the fort while we're gone, saying ground ball to second six months a year. And her parents, Tom and Ann Irely, who live right across the street from us here in Florida. So uh, it does take a village, and I'm a blessed man to know that uh, they've been in such great hands. And I, I can't wait to see where the upward trajectory of their lives takes them in the next few years. So what uh, former Cardinal or uh, legendary Cardinal figure have you gotten a congratulatory message from that you were, wow, he knows who I am, or I'm, I'm really thrilled to hear from him? Anybody? Yeah, Andy Bennis reached out. Uh, Andy Bennis used to beat the Cubs when I was doing the Cubs games all the time, so I still haven't forgiven him for that. Uh, he's one. Uh, Adam Wainwright has reached out. Uh, Adam lives in St. Simons, Georgia, where my one of my colleagues, Joe Simpson, lives. So they're very close, and he sent a really nice congratulatory text. Look, I, I'm really overwhelmed, Frank, quite honestly, with uh, the reception both in Atlanta at my departure and the, the fond memories that we created there and the well wishes going to St. Louis. But I must tell you, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the overwhelmingly positive reception is really humbling. Uh, I know what I'm stepping into. I know whose shoes I'm trying to fill. And I understand deeply how much Cardinals baseball means to that city. I saw it every time we'd come to town, and it always felt like home because that's what I grew up watching. But my family and I are really, really humbled and really, really grateful for such a warm Midwestern welcome. And uh, it was completely and totally unexpected to the degree to which we've seen it in, in the media and social media, which I don't follow, but my kids do. And for that, uh, I'm really, really grateful and uh, just, uh, you know, gets the juices flowing and gets me even more excited for what's going to be, I hope, an exciting chapter personally and an even more exciting chapter for the Cardinals going forward. And what do you think your uh, grandfather and father are saying in heaven about this news? Well, you, you took away my line. I said, I hope they're looking down and not up. Uh, you know, uh, um, uh, you know I, I, look, I hope they're happy. Um, everybody knows how much Cardinal baseball meant to my grandfather, and everybody knows the, the history of him there and what he did for you know the organization. Uh, my dad filled in a time or two, and he's a, 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 an all-star, a, a, a Hall of Famer at Webster Groves High School. I went to Parkway West. You know, it's just I, I hope they're proud. I hope they're happy. And I think, as I've said before, I said in my statement on social media was the point of the sport is to go home and you don't really get a chance to do that too often in our game. And for me at this point in my career, uh, man, I, this is, uh, you know, the, the, the big cherry on top of the Sunday. And I'm just overjoyed and thankful for the opportunity. And I'm going to do my best to, to fulfill the faith that so many have shown in me so far. Our mutual friend, Mike Claiborne, was telling me through the process, Chip is the guy we got to get and we got him. We're excited for you. Thanks so much for your time. We'll see you on the television side in a couple of minutes, but we'll see you in St. Louis and spring training shortly. I'm I'm sure. Thank you so much. Frank, you're too kind. Look forward to seeing you, man. Thanks. All right. Chip Carey, the new television voice of the Cardinals, joining us.